It's late night. And now, a man who isn't sure about the concept of detergent and fabric softener in one day. Thank you. It means a great deal to me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for selecting us as your evening's home entertainment. Yesterday, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, Paul. Tom Cruise. Movie Dave. star. Movie star. Dave. Uh, and a hunk, if you don't mind me well, saying so. That's uh, easy for you to say. Uh, Tom Cruise announced that uh, Christmas Eve, I think this is very, very romantic. Tom Cruise and his girlfriend were married in a private ceremony Christmas Eve. And when I heard this, I realized that I have a little something that I would like to share with you people here tonight. <laughs> About a week ago, I won my first bar fight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Paul, let's do the new ACDC thing. Here we go. That's one, right. two, one, two, three. Yeah. You know, ladies and gentlemen, presently in your homes there, you're watching us on NBC, the greatest television network in the world. Well, uh, January 1st, if you live here in Manhattan, you should be aware of this new regulation. It goes into effect January 1. If you are in Manhattan and you perform a mob hit, the city will validate your parking. So, you, never have to, you never have to worry, what, what the hell are we going to do with the getaway car? Because now, boom, put it right there in a kinney lot and take off and year out of there, clean as a whistle, back into Toledo. Hey! Thank you. How do you do? Well, it's one of our guests, Glenn Close. Glenn, nice to see you. Glenn is in the audience. Yeah, I saw her right up there. Oh, that's fabulous. What? It's not her? Hi, how do you do? No, that's Peggy she's, Lee. She's in the wrong room. <laughs> Whoever it is, she's in the wrong room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be done in a minute, ma'am. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the results of the 1990 census are in. There's some interesting uh, items. First of all, there's about 250 million Americans. And we have some uh, California, I believe, is the most populated state. Uh, Wyoming has the, the fewest people. New York City has the loudest people. So that we know that from. The... <laughs> uh, on the program tonight, did I mention it's the longest hour in television? <laughs> now, here, here over there is our friend Paul. Asking themselves, who is Alan Bragdon? Alan Bragdon, he uh, has a collection here of interesting items. Disappointed? Sir. Ask me, am I a little disappointed? Well, are you disappointed today and why? <laughs> well, why not just today, sir? but in general. Why? $2,500 for collagen injections in my lips, and nobody says a thing. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> Get out of here. Is that a hospital procedure or... Uh... No, a guy came to my house. I see. Full anesthetic then? <laughs> yeah, he was actually working with my plumber at the uh -huh. time. And, you know, they had to do some snake work, and he says, as long as we got this out, how about the injections in the lips? Mm -hmm. Collagen injections? Crazy. Enjoy a lovely beverage, why don't you? Oh, man, it's going to get cold here tonight. We're going to get some snow, they say. Really? Yeah, up to three or four inches of snow. That Come reminds up. me, the folks who work in the video store where you rent those videos, I rented some about uh, three weeks ago. I haven't had a chance of bringing them back. I may not bring them back. <laughs> and also, I don't want to be fined for it, all right? Because, frankly, I didn't enjoy the films that well to begin with. <laughs> Okay. Like a fine, like a $2 fine, just I because know. I didn't have the time to drop them off on my way to work one morning. I know, I you know You like a complete is. twit, you have to jump out of your car, race in and feed them into a little slot. Yeah. And it's always me and a dozen housewives trying to return films for the kids. I well, up. hey, I ain't bringing mine back, so screw you. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that may be a little harsh. Yeah. I like them. I'll bring them back. Okay. I'll bring them back eventually. You know, Paul, it's the, the time of year we like to do this. Uh, how many days left in this year, by the way? What is the date today, anyway? 27th. So that means we only have... Wait, is that the 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st? Yeah, that's right. So only a few days left in 1990. Let's, let's begin with some New Year's resolutions tonight. My, my New Year's resolution, I have to say in three simple words, low-sodium cheese. <laughs> Paul? My New Year's resolution is to keep doing what I'm doing, hosting American Bandstand. And my new hit game show, The Challengers, which tests your knowledge of current events and turning out those blooper and practical joke specials with Ed McMahon. Morty? My New Year's resolution is to... My yes, New Year's... Go ahead, Morty. Dave, my yeah, New Year's ahead. resolution 
is to get more reading done during the show, yeah, especially right. the great classes, classics like this one, Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Wow. Earlier in the broadcast, I was actually weeping. Actually weeping. Beth? Somebody was actually weeping during the earlier part My of the My New Year's time. resolution is to finally meet that guy over there who plays the piano. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Biff. You, wait a minute, you don't know Paul over there? Well, Biff Henderson, Paul Schaefer. Paul? Oh, hello, Biff Henderson. Paul, nice how you see doing? See Happy New Year to you, Happy Paul. Happy New Year to you. Oh, yeah. just, Thank you very just much, unbelievable. Steve. Boy, it's hot in here, Rose? isn't it? <laughs> Go ahead, Rose. My New Year's resolution is plain and simple. Right. Accessorize. Accessorize, okay. Almar? My New Year's resolution is to keep searching for the one-armed man and bring him to justice and prove to the world that I'm not responsible for the grisly execution-style killings of my next door neighbor. Al? Hi, Dave. Hi, Al. How you doing? Fine, thank you. My Good. New Year's resolution is to always use a glamorous special effect every time we cut to you because you, David Letterman, yeah, right. light up late right. night okay, TV. Fine. Thank Good, you. Jay. Thank Hello. you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do we, do we have time to finish this up? Larry? My New Year's resolution is to keep adding cheap, easy laughs to your little comedy sketches just by walking on camera. Happy New Year, suckers. <laughs> Marty, just for my own information, we get a time on that? Uh, can we get a time, Brian? Yeah, get a time on that. What, what was it in rehearsal? 140. We had it down to 140 yeah, in rehearsal. moved in for rehearsal. Yeah, we just... So... It was 2.30. 2.30! <laughs> I don't know how it happens. Well, the laughs and applause tend to stretch yeah. it and add to the time. <laughs> you got to allow for that. Yeah, okay. Let's, uh, let's do the top ten, and then we'll just... All right. I mentioned that NBC is the greatest television network yes, in the world. Yes, what is it that's caused your change of heart on well, this? Well, only a very, very deep sense of pride. Well, uh, good for you. Is it the new programming? What? Is it the new... Everything about it. Mm -hmm. NBC is the greatest television network in the world. For some reason... <laughs> Something really wrong here some tonight. Some reason, yeah, Something I was going to... desperately, say... desperately was... wrong here tonight. I was going to say that, yeah. Let's do the top ten list and then we'll end. Well, this will be the 11-minute show. <laughs> It's like, how get ready to roll the closing credits because when I'm done with this little piece of crap, we're out of here. <laughs> let Sports Boy figure out how to fill up the rest of the hour because <laughs> we're done. Let him let him talk to uh, who do they talk to? John Madden or uh, Sports Boy? That yeah, would be Bob, Bob Costas. Costas. Then. He can have he can okay. have the rest Sports of my boy. hour and his own little half hour because as soon as I'm done here, we're out of here. All, All right. right. Well, we'll just hit the closing theme then. All right. Here we go ahead. from the Home Office in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Top 10 rejected bowl game titles. <laughs> Believe me, this won't take long. <laughs> Here we go. Number 10, the Ben Gay Bowl. <laughs> Number nine, the White Guys All-Star Game. Number eight, the, the Cutlass Classic. Number seven, the Festival of Big Sweaty Men on Steroids. <laughs> Number six, I don't think it's a fracture, but I can't be sure until we take some X-rays bowl. <laughs> Number five, Saddam Hussein's scrimmage into death. Number four, the guys who come really close to passing their drug test, classic number three. The Tournament of Hoses, number two, Sissy Boy Slap Party. And the number one rejected bowl game title, Minute Bowl. Good night, everybody! Let me, uh, let me mention who's on the program. An assortment of things you've never, never seen, seen before. before. Well, let's just see. I have a feeling I may have seen a few of these <laughs> things before. <laughs> now you're going to discourage the viewers. Hey, pop, pop. Not to mention me. Well, I'm trying to add to the suspense of oh, the Okay, of the so you're wagering that you may have seen a few of these <laughs> I, I, Perhaps, oh, perhaps okay. maybe I have. Okay. Are we on the air now? Who knows? Okay. <laughs> Our uh, first guest is a... Uh, Glenn Close.
Thank you. Thank you very much for coming back to the little program here. Well, thank you. I know I'm here because Mel couldn't make it. Right? Mel was supposed to be here, and then I uh, had a change of plans. Had, yeah. to, had to go somewhere else, I understand. Right. Uh, but anyway, we couldn't be happier that you're here, and you were our first choice, of course. Oh, no. Oh, no, <laughs> no sure. No, we don't care about Mel. <laughs> it's between you and me. Uh, you're, you're in Hamlet with Mel. Yeah. Now, is this, is this uh, from a theatrical standpoint, uh, from an acting standpoint, is this, uh, did you think immediately this would be a good combination? I did, actually. Yeah. Because I've always thought Mel... There's that great scene in Lethal Weapon, the first Lethal Weapon, where he has the gun and he almost commits suicide. And I thought it was an extraordinary scene, and, and he has a great energy, and I love that. Right. And I thought it would be a yeah. good partner. Are, are there many gun scenes in Hamlet? No. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sword scenes. Now, now, when people go to see this, and, and if they took a copy of uh, the play with them, mm -hmm. the Shakespearean work, the original copy, could yeah. they actually follow along? Is, is it word for word? It's not word for word. No, it's a four and a half hour play. Wow. See, so, that'd be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> a lot of people would flock to the theaters to see that. <laughs> no, I think it's been brilliantly adapted to film in a way that you don't feel that you're seeing a play. It's really yeah. incredibly cinematic, and it's been paired away to just the the meat of the of the beautiful language and then it's great production values and action. Now, now who does that whose responsibility is that to get it so it uh, doesn't seem like a four and a half hour play franco zeffirelli and um chris devore and a lot of the actors had mm -hmm. a lot of say in mm -hmm. what they did or didn't yeah. have to say but but you can't it's a situation where you can't and maybe you can't do this in films generally you can't make up your own line no, you can't add your own word here <laughs> No. Yeah, because people would go nuts. It's hard nice. to improvise in yeah. Shakespearean English. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hi, now. Hi. Uh, and uh, you and Mel got along okay during the filming of this? Very thing? well, yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what I uh, uh, thought you were terrific in as well was the, uh, the reversal of fortune deal. Oh. Okay. Yeah, now that was a, a great part for you. It was a, a small part by comparison to the other actors, but a pretty good part, didn't you think? Yeah, well, I like, I love that script. It's, it's, I think it was a brilliant, brilliant script to have it narrated by a woman in a coma. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. that doesn't happen every day. Yeah. And uh, so I, I was, again, I watched, it was something I wanted to be a part of and to be with Jeremy Irons again. Jeremy Irons does a great job uh, playing Klaus von Bülow mm -hmm. and uh, Ron Silver does a great job doing uh, Alan Dershowitz. Yeah. yeah, it was entertaining. And what I realized about halfway through this film is it's okay just to en enjoy as much of this movie as you can because a lot of times you'll be in a movie and, and you'll be emotionally touched and you'll start to sob and, and have to leave or something. Mm -hmm. But this one, I thought, I can enjoy this as much as I want because these are the kind of people you don't really have to care about, period. <laughs> don't you think? I mean, they were that kind of people. Of yeah. course, they had problems. I we guess. all have problems. But do we care about them? Uh, I don't know ultimately whether you do or not. No. I hope you pity. You have some sort of pity for at least Sonny. So, was Sonny was alive in a coma for 10 yes, years. Yes, and, and certainly in a pitiable state. Yeah. But did she uh, get there by her own uh, lifestyle, perhaps? Maybe. I don't know. I always think she was a woman who was, who was just... Um, uncomfortable in the in the position she was born into one of those kind of maybe tragedies of circumstance yeah 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 uh anyway i thought it was a very entertaining film did a great job with it uh what are we doing here all right we have to do a com yeah yeah uh now are there uh, are there uh, actresses uh, do you think men or women are better actors does it make any difference is there anything uh, g g gender related here i don't think so really no i think you're either a good actress or a bad actor do you think the best actor uh, currently working today is a man or a woman Oh, God. <laughs> um, and your answer has to be in the form of a question. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to answer that. Really? No, no you could answer that. No, I don't have an opinion of who's better, who's best. I don't think it applies. Are there, are there actresses whose, whose work you, you, you see and you take home and you think, mm, man, they're doing something there I'm envious of? Not envious. I like it inspired a lot by my fellow actors. Yeah. Well, that's the way it should be. That's the, yeah. The, yeah, that's the nature of yeah. creative work. Now, are there actors or actresses whose work gets a great deal of praise that you just think, what is that? Sometimes, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, you can't... Because you know the real story. Kind oh, of. oh, yeah. Oh, man. Do you yeah. have a real story we can... Yeah, but I wouldn't tell you, no. Yeah, uh, I know. I know how that goes. Um, yeah, editors are, can be magicians. When, when you, uh, when you uh, have been nominated now five times, what is the record for nominations for an Academy Gosh, Award? I don't, you know? I don't know. I would think five would, must be very close to it. And, and what do people say to you at these award ceremonies these days? When you go there and you... I voted for you. Yeah, they say that too? Yeah. 
Uh, but it must be fun to go regardless. I mean, you can't have fun really if you're nominated, can you? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I, to me, to be nominated is really the great honor. Mm -hmm. And who win? I don't know about winning or losing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think anybody's a loser, and I don't know how. I mean, if everybody voted for me and I haven't won, I don't know who, you know, who yeah, votes. Yeah. Uh, is, <laughs> is, it, is it possible for, for not necessarily you, but maybe uh, an actor or actor, here we go back to these questions again, to have a successful career in, in the world of films and, and not win an Academy oh, Award? Yes, a lot of our most wonderful actors never got Oscars. Yeah, like who? I think, uh, <laughs> I don't think, uh, did Cary Grant ever get one? No. Did Jimmy Cagney ever get one? Oh, yeah. Did he? He got two or three. Did he? Oh, well, that's good. He deserved it. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think it's... Uh, that's not, you know, to me. I mean, it's, I would think it'd be great to win, but... Yeah. I never choose stuff thinking the, it's going to get I, The important thing is to continue to do the best work you possibly can, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. hopefully get good material. Absolutely. Uh, uh, let's talk about your Christmas. Did you do anything special? Did you spend the time with the family? What would you yeah, do? Yeah, very quiet. Yeah, the quiet meaning at your home in, yeah. in yeah. Connecticut? Yeah, well, no, out in New York State. Yeah, New York State. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you're worried I'm going to follow you home. <laughs> <aren't you? laughs> Uh, no. Was it was it a big I, celebration? A big no, quest? very very small. Because yeah. I've been away working for eight months this year, and it mm -hmm. was just great to be home and not have to go anywhere. Yeah. And do you know what your next project will be now? Nope. Really? No. Nope. And are people just uh, uh, knocking on your door day and night saying, "Here, here's nope. a script." Here's a script. Really? <laughs> no. Really? And I what? can say yes, but it's not the truth. <laughs> and but that that's by your own desire, right? Well, uh, yes and no. Yeah. I mean, I could be working now if I wanted to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, I haven't been offered material that I have responded to. So. Yeah. Uh, and you're pleased with the way Hamlet turned out? Very, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and is there a film uh, that you, you could have been in that you haven't been in that you wish you had been in now? No. No, there isn't. Yeah. No. What, what was the biggest film you turned down? I haven't big, turned down a, a film that I've regretted, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yet. I'm sure it will happen. Yeah. For, for me, it would have been uh, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> But I wish you, yeah, your life would have been totally oh, different. Oh, are you telling me? Plus, think yeah. of all those free white suits I could I have had. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hamlet is, is there... That exactly. won't drive me crazy. Exactly, and that's uh, the John Kenny Cougar Aronoff Mellencamp's on the uh, drums. drummer. From yeah, the Kenny, nice to see you. Original John Cougar Mellencamp. Mellencamp's still living in Indiana? Yes, sir. Yeah, what part of Indiana? Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana, but he's from Seymour, isn't right. that? Yeah, now does he make you guys all go down there and hang around? <laughs> We hang around in Bloomington. Yeah, yeah, but he's got like a huge barracks that he wants everybody to come and live in, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, no, not exactly. Yeah, sure, Kenny. Talk to talk to me later, will you? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, it was my idea originally to call him Johnny Cougar. Is that right? That was my idea, yeah. You getting royalties on that? Yeah, no, it's Johnny Cougar. I thought it'd be a cute name. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, the red light's on. Uh, coming up in this... Well, we can do... Now, here's some comedy. Get ready for comedy. <laughs> These are actual, what is this, dumb ads. Paul, do you have music for this? Yes, dumb ads. Those dumb ads. Those cuckoo ads. Those crazy ads. You, Paul Schaefer, the haunting and beautiful love theme from dumb ads. Now, when you go down there, does he make you, does he like pretend you're actually on a farm and you go out and bale hay and clean up after animals and all that stuff? And you, you kind of have to put a law and put up with it because you want to be on the record, right? Of course. Yeah, well, the guy's goofy. You know the guy's goofy, you know, right? Oh, you, you're from Indiana, you know. No, yeah, sure. Where are you from? Originally from Massachusetts. Yeah, well, you must hate going out there. No, I've lived there for 20 years. I love it. You, you actually live in Bloomington? Yeah. Oh, you do not. I live in Bloomington, and I go to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they are pretty much the sister cities. <laughs> What do you fly that MGM Grand out of Bloomington? <laughs> right into LA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, today, boys, we're going to brand cattle. Oh, God, John, please, not this. <laughs> Here we go, our first dumb ad uh, Plaza Meat Market. Happy Hanukkah, whole pork loins, $1.69 a pound. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta break the rules. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
there. That's what it's like, isn't it, Kenny? Oh, yeah. You're trying to get some sleep, and there's uh, horses and pigs and... <laughs> uh, here's an ad for something called My First Boom Box. There it is right there. Never too early to encourage your child to become a public nuisance. <laughs> Missed the window by a foot. Uh, Christmas gift ideas, mouse traps, four for a dollar. What better way to tell a friend, I notice you have mice. <laughs> yeah, we're going riding today. Okay, John, all right. Yeah. And we're gonna go hunt some bear. No, you're not. Just get in the limo, John, and cool off, will you? <laughs> uh, here's something. Meet or Oriole Franks, $1.79. <laughs> Paula, Paula, have you ever tasted Oriole? It's not uh, bad. No. It's, it's a little like chicken. It is, I <laughs> I see. Oh, is that you? It's you, yeah. <laughs> Lots of people backstage whistling. No, it was me. <laughs> Free, burned-out mobile home, 14 by 70, six wheels, aluminum siding, good for storage space, must haul away soon. Oh, okay, what's the catch? <laughs> uh, 12 hour Memorial Day inventory clearance sale, tomorrow only, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. <laughs> we believe the store is located right on the international date line. Uh, if I can do it, anyone can. Thank you, Slim Time. <laughs> no diet, no exercise, they just removed those two kids from his pants. Uh, here's an ad. Fesh Live Kissmas Gini. Handmade Weaths. Live Kissmas Guinea handmade weeds. Uh, how, how much ad costs if we don't use ours? How are we doing on time? Mm -hmm. uh, West Coast Appliance Center, Mr. GE. Well, that's certainly a face you can trust, isn't it, Paul? Mr. You G. can put your confidence in the brand of excellence, the household appliances that bear the name G.E. Here we go. You're invited to have your ornaments... Um, uh, let's see. You're invited to have your ornaments mouth blown while you wait. You know, I... I I remember when it used to be a big deal just to sit on Santa's lap, but now... It'll be a music... So witness... You boys come out here from Hollywood to make an album, but first we get farming to do. <laughs> Our next guest is a waiter... I'm sorry, a writer. <laughs> A historian and collector of uh, some really old stuff that no one else wants. He has cataloged them in this new book right here, Ingenious Inventions of Domestic Utility. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alan Bragdon. Alan? Hi, Alan. Pleasure to see you. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Hi. Alan, where, where are you from, sir? Cleveland, Ohio is where I started oh, out. Oh, good for you, good but for you. But mostly New England, which is where these things got collected. All right, and, and explain to us now what, the, what is in your book here. What have you chronicled for us? A lot of things, as you pointed out, that nobody can identify. These are old? they don't even use much anymore. Old farm implements? Farm implements, stuff around the house. Your grandmother might have worked with it right. in the kitchen. Your uh, uncle might have uh, worked with it in the orchard. Well, what's the oldest item you have here tonight? Let's see. Aside from the tie. <laughs> yeah. <it's not laughs> good night, everybody. It's my pleasure. Ryan Sampley, good night. <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, a beautiful tile. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, seriously. Listen for the occasion. <laughs> the oldest item here. Yeah. Me. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, all right. After well, that. Should we just begin now and you show us these things and we'll take a look at them? Yeah. Would you okay. like to sure. demonstrate a couple yeah. of them? Okay. Go ahead. Do you know how to, you know what this is? This is, I'm guessing because of the apples, is probably an apple coring device. Peeling. 
Apple peeling device. Yeah. All right. What? Put it on end two. Just jam it right on in there. Right in there like that? Yeah. Okay. That's it. And then crank. Crank. All right. And stand up. <laughs> wow. Is it, is it, you catch it. Oh, you're supposed to catch it. But yeah. normally you'd have like a, a colander or something underneath there and you'd be ready to go, wouldn't you? Right, to catch yeah. the peel. Is there a better way now to peel apples than, than this device? Well, the problem with this apple is that it's delicious, see, and it's not uniform. That's right. a little better, but right. it sure beats doing it by hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you but, I'm, also do it but what potato. I'm talking about today, do we have something that does it more rapidly than this? No, you don't. No, nope. three or four people all working at the same time. That's about it. Well, then, then, now, what is it doing? What am I doing wrong there? What, what is that? You're have? doing well, nothing not wrong. Uniforms, which is, hey, Paul. It's, 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 yeah. Thank you. But it'll also, <laughs> it'll also do potatoes. Potatoes? Yep. Sure. Yep, turnips. Okay. In case you want to peel the turnips. Paul, that was on the floor. What is the matter with you? I bet you peeled it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, now, what, what's next? Do you want to try to guess? Because that's part of the idea. The book. Just photographs these things, oh, and you I know, try to. I know exactly what this. Pierced ears. What that? <laughs> no, you know it hurts a lot. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, it's a grommet. It's some kind of grommeting device. Good thinking. What, Very what close. It? What is it? In fact, in fact, this kind of thing, one just like it. I used to have the best what is it? time. Pits. 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 It pits Sorry. things. No, one one against the other. Uh -huh. No, it's a uh, it's a. We used to have a good time with this, trying to ask people what they are, what right. it was, and watch their minds work and see yeah. how they look at it from underneath and try to figure it out. Yeah. Had a wonderful time at parties with these. Right. All right. It is a bunion wrench. Oh. You ever heard of a bunion? Yes, sure. It's a corn. Yeah. And nobody, nobody in this audience is old enough to know what a bunion no. is. Yeah. But uh, if you have a corn, you know, and your and your boots don't don't fit. Right. Then you just put that right down in the boot. All right. And you squeeze like that, and it pushes the leather up through here, and it makes a little lump there, so it won't grate on your corns. Ooh, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I fully you, understand first that. First, you take your foot out of the boot. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it stretches the leather of the boot. Right. All right, okay, great. Okay, here, look at this. Onion ring. Mm. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Oh! The bunion ring. <laughs> What's next? Well, this one nobody is going to guess. That's a little Don't memento. Try. Oh, okay, you go <laughs> ahead with yours and then I'll do mine. It's a what is it? it what is it? I don't know. It's Gypsy Rose Lee when she was 11 years there old. There you go yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. I'll try mine. A memento from your honeymoon. <laughs> Great. Boy, Solid. Was I proud? What when is I, that, uh, when... doctor? Are you a doctor? <laughs> no. Do you mind if I call you a doctor? I wish you would. <laughs> What is that, doctor? I better wear a white coat than a pink face. Exactly. This is, uh, these are, in the old days when you had horse and buggy. Yeah. You know you where the audience is, right? In the old days when you had horse and buggy. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be good looking. You are. I'm oh, OK. Come on, what is that, doctor? In the old days when you had a horse and buggy, you had to uh, take care of your horse. And, right. you, and even though you spent most of the time looking at one end of the horse, you had to take care of the other end. Now, flies are a bad thing, mm -hmm. and it bothers horses a lot. Right. So this was knitted by a lady. Put them right over their ears. Go over the ears. Exactly. Exactly. Right. To what keep else? the flies out. How of much time do we have? One and a half. Let's uh, let's get right to the big stuff. What else is here? Well, let's just keep. You're moving. a Midwestern, aren't That's you? That's right. So Indiana you know about chickens. Indiana. Oh, I know all about chickens. Okay. Well, then you know that one of the important things about chickens is that when it's time for dinner, right. a chicken knows it. That's right. And exactly. so that, and if you're getting, if you're beginning to get, to, if you're beginning to get to the age where it's a little hard to go scrabbling after chicken like this. <laughs> When it gets to be Sunday... Oh, hi, doctor. There you are. Yeah. I thought you'd your... left on a house call. Yeah. Huh? Don't turn your back when I've got this in my hand. So uh, you, gotta, you, you grab him by the neck. You just ring him... By the leg. By the leg. Tripping. By the leg. It's a chicken tripper. Right. It's a chicken <laughs> tripper. The chicken is trying to take the trip. Name and of my band in the 70s. Did you know that? The chicken trippers. <laughs> yeah, very popular. You remember that, Paul, don't you? Yeah, yeah of course we were. And so uh, you have to keep the chicken, as well as get the chicken cooked, yeah. you have to keep it wet. Okay. Now, What's one next? of the problems with chickens is that they aren't very bright, and oh, they don't take care of their right. environments, a lot like us. Mm -hmm. And so one of, the, one of the things you have to do is to invent a contraption that will keep the chickens out of the water. Exactly. So you invent this thing, which is, I'm glad to point out, doesn't have a hole in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right. And Big ceramic funnel-like item, but no right. hole in the bottom. And notice the shape. Uh -huh. It's a significant. And then you put this on top. 
and that, then that the water feeds them their water, yeah. But they can't sit on it. Exactly. Right, right. <laughs> That's the whole point. Now, yeah. don't you think it was an inventive mind to put something like that I think together? so, because they, the, the chickens are... Oh, sure, whatever. Let's just... Yeah, keep... <laughs> What's next, doctor? Well, one thing is... One, uh, one of the good things about hearing aids... Yeah. Right? Is that you can take them off when you don't like what you're hearing. Right. And this is an old-fashioned hearing aid from about 1840. Wow. And, uh, and sound increases in its, uh, the, the sound amplifies as it goes through a tube. Yeah. And then because this pokes out like your ear, you Excellent. can hear it better. Sorry. A primitive hearing device. A primitive hearing device. All right. All right. Let's do the last one, doctor. This is fun. Now, if you're, in the old days when there used to be uh, a lot of bounty, you know, the, the harvest all came in That's and right. you had to oh, do, you'd take have, care sure. of the process. You'd have uh, corn, you'd have potatoes. You'd have two or three kinds of beans. You'd have uh, tomatoes. You'd have squash. You'd have zucchini. Right. All right, let's get to it. Dr. This is how you make succotash out of it. Succotash. This, is, uh, this has, this is cabbage, in case all of you knew that. Mm -hmm. Cabbage. So you oh, crank oh, it oh up. it's you a want good one. Oh, sure. Now, inside there. Great. It's unbelievable. You're chopping up the uh, cabbage. This, wow. is, this is the original Cuisinart. Man, now, that, that, see, that would work in any kind of quantity. That would really work. Well, darn right. Yeah. You had to do it. Well, in of hurry. course you had to do it in a hurry. Before it rotted. Exactly. No refrigeration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what do we do now? <laughs> well, we got to... <laughs> no refrigeration. Let's go down to Hurley's and get Thank a drink. God, we <laughs> right. right. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, my thanks to Alan. Complete list of your program. by air, rail, bus, and getaway car, it's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Jane Pauley, actress B.B. Case, and comedian Bob Sarlat, plus Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous man. And now, a man who can't convince the French that he's a genius. David like I've just taken over Romania. <laughs> uh, you know that feeling you get when you, you figure something out for yourself, when you solve a problem, when something happens to you, and in a few minutes later you found out a way to deal with it? It's resourcefulness. And you know that feeling of pride that uh, washes over you when, you, when, that, when that happens? You know what I'm talking about? I'm walking to work this morning, and I get about halfway up the street, and it occurs to me, I've left my sunglasses back in the house. And then a couple of seconds later, it hits me. Just squint. So, <laughs> yeah, well, according to a report in today's uh, Washington Post, uh, uh, priests inside the papal nunciature, that's where Noriega is now, the papal nunciature, priests inside the papal nunciature are taking confession from Manuel Noriega in round-the-clock shifts. So, <laughs> uh, 
just a squint. Ah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, Time Magazine is in the news a lot because it's their man of the decade, this uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, man of the decade. And also, they're raising the price, the cover price of the magazine from $2 to $2.50. Well, it was either that or lay off all those operators who are always standing by. <laughs> There's no, there's no reason to abort the mission, is there? <laughs> Onward and upward. What a show, ladies and gentlemen. You know, if, uh, if you could only watch one television show for the rest of your life, this one tonight would be the one to watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's more discouraging, when they don't buy it or when they do buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the program tonight, a very funny gentleman. He's been with us uh, several other times, and he'll be just as funny here tonight. Bob Sarlat is with us, and the lovely, oh, is she ever, the lovely, the talented Phoebe Cates is here tonight. Is it hot in here? Or... <laughs> oh, thanks, <Ian. laughs> Oh, man, alive. I'm sweating like a New York waiter. Thank you. Um... In addition to all of this, making her... Now, see, tomorrow will be her last appearance as the regular co-host of the Today Show. And, that's right. Jane Pauley is with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So, now, say hello to our good friend, uh, Paul. He's right over there. Hello, Paul. Nice to see you. What went wrong? Everything was going along so... No. You know, thank you. You know what? Someone has, someone has come to me with a topical idea. I think it's a pretty good idea to yeah, put out a that? line of, uh -huh. of fashion, my own line of fashion, line to go of fashion, with today's sure, right. current events. Yeah. Nunciaturiae fashions. Yeah, I like that. You think? Yeah, and All an right. example of that would be like what, for example? Well, it would be, you know, like a smoking jacket uh -huh. that you would wear around the nunciature, you know, in the evening while relaxing. Paul, we're five minutes into the show. What has gone wrong? I don't know. It started out, we came on the network right on time. The theme came up. The music sounded great. Me? The opening montage. No, no, it's not you. It's me. I've done something the wrong. How, how can I make it up to you folks, you, you fine people who have waited in the weather all afternoon, to be with us here tonight? What? A new, all right, a new car. That seems reasonable. I'll see to it that you all get a new car. By the way, Paul, did you get your holiday tie from SpaghettiOs? Uh -huh. <laughs> here it is. Look, it's a joke about my tie. Now things will take off. Yeah. Uh, Jane Pauley is on the show. This is kind of an emotional day for everybody because this woman has been uh, the Today Show for 13 years. She took the job, I guess, uh, 13 years ago. That would be, what, 76? Yeah. December of 76? And she's been there uh, nearly every day since. It's hard to imagine the Today Show without Jane Pauley, isn't it? Yes, it is. So it's a little, it's a little kind of a, a sad moment for us tonight, Absolutely. but she's on to bigger and better things. We wish her the best. Yeah, and we're a little nervous about this, aren't we? About bringing her out tonight yeah. and talking to her? Yeah. Well, what do you mean we, white man? <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing, to seeing. <laughs> yeah, so am I. Uh, let's see. You know what it's time to do now, ladies and gentlemen? It's time to rotate the guest chairs. Boys, come on out and take care of that. We do this every year, and uh, we thought tonight that we'd share with you this uh, procedure. Let's do this as quickly as we can. Rotating the guest chairs. Here we go. As quickly. There's chair number one. Chair number two. I feel like a complete jerk because, you know, the staff, uh, as a lovely gift to me for Christmas, gave me a, a car phone, car phone yeah. and I've been using it. And, and if you feel like a jerk without a car phone, you feel like an even bigger jerk with a car phone. What do you, what do you mean? Well, for one thing, I've got to get the number changed. I keep getting a lot of calls from Mr. Goodwrench. Ah. <laughs> How about that? There's that one, and then the joke about the tie. So, yeah. Let's do the uh, top ten and then uh, warm up the car and I'm out of here. 
Ladies and gentlemen, timely as today's headlines, top 10 ways 1989 could have been worse. <laughs> top 10 ways 1989 could have been worse. Fair enough. In many ways, it was a very odd year, wasn't it, Paul? Yes, it was. But I think that could be said for almost any year, yeah. don't you? Yeah. It was an odd year, and yet it probably could have been worse. <laughs> Top 10 ways 1989 could have been worse. Here we go, number 10. The Exxon Valdez could have been loaded with Cher perfume. Well, you see, right there, that would have been a... Dom DeLuise as Batman. Uh, number eight, Penthouse, Leona. Enough said. Uh, number seven, a Gabor brother. Number six, entrepreneurs could have been selling souvenir chunks of Irving Berlin. Hey, that's, uh, thank God, hey, and thank God they weren't. Am I right? Yes, sirree. Uh, number five, Ernest might not have saved Christmas. Number four, my slap fight with Barbara Streisand could have occurred right here on the air. Number three, Bush could have picked a really, 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 really dumb guy to be vice president. Thrown yes, out there. white man. I was. Uh, <laughs> yes. We're in this together. What happened? Uh, well, I was. We were enjoying it so much. Uh -huh. You weren't paying that attention. We forgot to come Admit in. Admit it. You weren't paying we were, attention. Well, we were planning. We had a wonderful musical cue. Okay. It's and, over, Anton. <laughs> no, that was number three. Number two. Oh. Number two. Hey, you're oh, it's not away. over. No, it's not over. We're at number three. Oh, there's three more to go. Yeah. And then we play the music. See after me that. after class. All right. <laughs> Uh, number two, Mick Oysters. <laughs> Jeez, Paul, maybe you were right. Uh, <laughs> maybe you had some kind of telepathic impression you were working on there. So. And the number one, somebody cue the band if Jim Baker had made it to the Vatican Embassy. <laughs> You know, Jane and I uh, started out in broadcasting together. Is that true? Back there in Indianapolis. She really? worked at a TV station, I worked at a radio station, and then she went to Chicago. I went to, uh, I guess I went to California, and here we are tonight on the big show together. And tomorrow's her last day. Tomorrow's her day. last day. So no wonder you're a little choked up about it. Yeah, a little nervous. I am too. Paul, I understand you got kind of a uh, interesting letter you'd like to share with us. Well, I did, Since as a matter of fact. Since it's the holidays? I did, as a matter ah! of fact. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did, and tonight's long distance dedication comes to us from a man in uniform overseas, uh -huh. and it reads, Dear Paul, this year I was unable to spend the holidays with my family, and I'm feeling kind of down. Lately, the only music I hear is what they play on the U.S. Armed Forces radio, and frankly, it's not my style. It would really lift my spirits if you would play Say You, Say Me by Lionel Richie, God Bless, Signed, Manuel in Panama City. Well, <laughs> thank you for your letter, Manuel, but I'm not sure we know that one. Do you guys know Say You, Say Me, Lionel? Lionel, Lionel Richie, no. Yeah. Tell you what, though, we do know Whole lot of Love by Led Zeppelin, so Manuel in Panama City, this one goes out to you. <laughs> I just uh, took a second there to enjoy a sip of my beverage. 
What are you enjoying? You know, this I don't think there's a man, woman, or child alive today in this country who doesn't enjoy a lovely beverage. <laughs> okay. Uh, our first guest tonight is uh, one of the warmest and most popular figures in the history of American television. Uh, tomorrow, this woman will step down after 13 years as co-host of the Today Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a good friend of ours, of all of ours. Here she is, Jane Pauley. Oh, Jane. You look, you look terrific, as always. Can I tell you what an honor it is to appear on one of the ten best television programs of the 80s? <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. I Did appreciate that. Did they know that? that? I don't think so. Do you think, know that? No, I wasn't aware of that. Time Magazine. Is that right? Time Magazine. Well, that's very nice of you to mention. One of the ten best. Now, let me... Television. Now... Uh, and we're proving it nightly. Now <laughs> you've got about three days I know, left. I we're here, out of the category. Sure. Right. Now uh, let me just say, uh, it, now it, were this me, if this were me in your situation, or me in my situation, similar to your situation, I know, I'm nervous. You'd look funny in this, and I'd look funny <laughs> no, in that. Actually, I think it pre looked pretty nice in that. Well, but I don't know that the night before my last show, I would, you know, feel up to coming on uh, a little two-bit deal like this. Well, and I agreed uh, uh, to come here cheerfully, as a matter of right. fact. What, two weeks ago? Yes. Or so when we... I was under the illusion that I was going to maintain a remarkable sense of, of well, of cool, of being in control, mm -hmm. of professionalism right up and through the last moment, and I was wrong. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. Uh, this morning, uh, to be perfectly honest, it hit me. It's, it's like I've wondered all along if there wasn't a little part of me that hadn't been told yet. Mm -hmm. Right. She got wind of it this morning yeah. and she's not yeah. happy. Well, it, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to do. It's to, really to hard. To leave a situation you've been in and successful in for 13 years. Even though I am really excited about what is coming mm -hmm. next. And, and to, let's talk about that. What is coming next? Now, I know you're going to be doing uh, primetime shows with you There's and your friends. There's a primetime special that I have already started to shoot, as a matter of fact. So in a way, the future began about mm -hmm. a week ago right. when I uh, started shooting a, a segment of a, a special which will be on the air in March. And you and Tom had a little and deal on last night? Tom and I had a little deal on where yeah. we kind of summed well, up the 80s successful. together in 44 minutes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> well, just the highlights. Now, now, what is the topic of the special in March? Changes. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have learned firsthand how how really fascinating going through a transition point in life is and and banal though it may be because every life has transitions mm -hmm. but it's a universal and people tend to it, it resonates with everybody whether you're talking about um, uh, going home to start a family or changing jobs or even early retirement or a variety of, of changes that there was a, a, a universal here and it was intrinsically interesting so what we're doing is we're finding people at transition points we're making changes with stories even more interesting than mine uh, manuel would be a good choice yeah. for instance he's not going to make this let, me, let me uh, let me uh, ask you a couple of questions about the change that you have now come through uh you're leaving the today show 13 years there uh, you must have uh, good thoughts about it and bad thoughts about it. But I don't have bad thoughts about either it. Either way you look at it, mm. you must be happy you're not going to have to see Willard's fat ass every morning. <laughs> am, am I close on that? Mm. Of course. No, we, we both, we hey, both it's a raised, joke. I'm very fond we of Willard. I was raised in Indianapolis, so I have to be polite <laughs> to you. You know, I was raised by a man who wouldn't hang up on an obscene phone caller. Oh, is you that know, right? You know, it would be rude to hang up on somebody, so it would. I have to um, uh, continue to be civil to you. I, you know, I, you know, I adore Willard. Yeah, I like Willard too. I think yeah. Willard is is a last of a dying breed. He's one of the old, true pioneer professional broadcasters, and you could get Willard up uh, any time, day or night, and he'd do the job for you. Boom, just Done like right. that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But he's still nuts. Ah, <laughs> uh, now. Now, you know, uh, for, for a time, you couldn't pick up a, a newspaper, you couldn't pick up a magazine, and even still today, one of the USA Today, there's a big cover story about you. This whole thing, this important change in your life... is going to come to an end tomorrow, 
Maybe on Saturday there'll be a little, and then as far as this publicity phenomenon, yes. I'm going to fall off the edge of, of the earth and not be heard of. Well, you're being there. modest, but I will grant you that people do go on with their lives. I mean, yeah. this is a very important thing. But were you surprised at the amount of attention that this attracted? Surprise doesn't do justice. Mm -hmm. uh, shock is more in the right uh, vicinity because, you know, what seems to be... The story seems to be, in story after story, and frankly, I, mean, I love this, that, that Jane is a, Jane's a, she's a fine person. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of what they say? Yeah. It's not Jane is, is um, uh, ought to win a Nobel Prize, mm -hmm. or, or Jane is the uh, prime principal journalist of her generation. That's not what they're saying, of both of which I would be flattered by. What they're saying is she's... She's been a regular person. Solid American a solid womanhood. Solid regular person. Yeah. Now, if that is the story. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I like to think mind. I had a little something to do with that. Never mind. Never mind if it's if it's true or completely off the mark. Yeah. That that story would generate that kind of of media mm -hmm. attention. I find in incredible. Well, that's, that's of course, all Where's credit. Where's the headline to, there? It's all credit to you. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I think people at one point perceived you as having been in danger. And because they feel so strongly about you and you've oh, become sorry. such a large part of their life and a very important part of their day, uh, you know, they were, they were worried and concerned. Now, another question about this. We heard all kind of stories that you were shoved out of the picture, that uh, you were treated poorly, uh, that this was all your idea. We heard every point of the compass. We heard that story. Yeah. N what can we take away from this episode that you think would be close to the truth? That if I, if I told you what really happened, I wouldn't look as smart as I look now because it looks like I somehow engineered the most incredible professional promotion that anybody has ever had enabled themselves to bump up into a primetime yeah. show. Good for you. And so if I told you what really happened, I wouldn't look the smartest. No, you're that good, would make good for you. Uh, you're, you're like a big hero of mine. I'm very, very happy <laughs> for you. I think this is just great, and you got a lot of dough out of these no, weasels. You know, no, 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 that's not true. No, the funny see, part of the see, story my impression is I was is trying to give the money no, back. I know. But see, my feeling is, my impression of this is, you got everything you wanted plus a lot more money. Well, so there you go. Well, it was a matter of, of, of having to console myself with not getting what I wanted. But the consolation was, you get this nifty new primetime show and you get to keep the money. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I was able to accept that, you know, total victory was not necessary. That's not the name of the show, by the way, is it? Total victory? No, the nifty new primetime show. <laughs> uh, we got to do a commercial. We'll be right back here with uh, the lovely Jane Pollock. But you know, you I must. I to give you regards from the cartoon boy, by the way. Oh, sorry. I, you know, that just came out last night. I was having trouble getting your husband's name out of the back of my he mind. Was, he was watching at the no, time, and he thought, did that yeah. mean that he was raised in the wild by, no. by cartoonists or something? No. Cartoon boy. I, I was, we were talking about your appearance, and I said to Paul that I mentioned your family and your mm -hmm. husband, and I couldn't think of the name Gary Trudeau, and I'm right. sorry. I called him Cartoon, cartoon Boy. boy. I'm sorry. Loved it. <laughs> And I, I was hoping that that would just slide right by, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do, well, what do you have there? I brought, I was cleaning out my, my uh, office, which, as we speak, is either boxes or empty. Pictures mm -hmm. are off the wall. It's all very sad, frankly. It must be jarring to go in there and, and see this it's, stuff. Yes, even though yeah. I knew it was going to happen, I wasn't prepared for the impact. And I think that's one of the reasons today has kind of been a, mm -hmm. a slippery day in an emotional sense. Do you think about, but, like, a tag sale or anything? Well, I got some, <laughs> I found some stuff. And I want to take this, but I want to show it to you, but I'd like to keep it because right. you know how, how you find uh, baseball cards if they're still in their original wrapper. They're the more valuable. They're really, yes. Okay, so this is, this are Jane Pauley today business cards still in their original wrapper, and as of now, they're sort of uh, collector's items. Now, these, these are a little older because they don't have the uh, current logo on them, do they? Uh-huh. So these go way yeah. back. Okay. So, all right. I brought you these. These are official uh, Jane Pauley Today Show key rings. 
Wow. Perhaps, are you ever asked to give auction items to yes. people? Yes, yes, all the time. Well, this is a kind of a, a, a promotion. This is what you give? We, oh, yes, yeah. and, and my assistant tells me that once uh, it was reported back to her that it brought six dollars and fifty cents mm -hmm. at an auction. About, now, about eight times what it's worth, I might add. Probably. Okay. Now, we usually just send them a check for ten grand. My thinking is, I want to give you a few of these because you probably could find some way to use them here on late night. Either give them as favors to, right. to guests or, or maybe raise some money for a worthy right. cause. I have three of them. Two right. of them are still in their original okay. bag. Right. Good enough. This, I found all kinds of stuff in the back of my closet that I, I forgot I had. One of the things I found in the back of my closet was, was this. Do you remember? I do remember, and uh, it's with a great bit of trepidation that I hold this up. This is you and I. This is at the... Uh... <laughs> I had just walked away from an honor farm <laughs> moments before police apprehended me. And we're both riding goats. Yeah, this yeah. was uh, this was the Indianapolis Children's Museum. Exactly. You were doing a segment of the Today Show there. Yeah, this yeah. was probably ten years ago. Yeah, e easily ten years e ago. Ten years ago, and the yeah. inscription says, "Dear Jane, honestly, should either of these people be on network television? Let's go back before <laughs> it's too late." Yeah, yeah that's kind of cute, isn't it? That really is. Yeah, uh, this was all back in Indianapolis. Now, um, so. Tell me about the first Today Show you were on. I, that's a silly question, but who was on? Who did you interview? Who I did you talk to? I have the vaguest idea. Yeah. I, I, really, I really don't remember. Mm -hmm. I, in 13 years, I'm pretty sure there are entire years that I have forgotten. Yeah. You, know, you know how it is. You go through school. If I said um, third grade, how many details? And you spent a year there. Right. How many details? Maybe it's the eighth grade that you have forgotten. Sure, yeah. It's possible that it I It depends have when you did your drinking. But also... <laughs> What you're, what you're going to remember? <laughs> what what are the what are the the moments that you uh, sometimes will will dwell on and think? Boy, I was really very lucky to have been a part of that. There was that day. If there was a, a show, the biggest ego boost and and perhaps my fondest and it was so sweet was the day we did the show aboard the aircraft carrier, the Coral Sea. Mm -hmm. The fact there were four thousand. Um, Sailors and me. Ooh. Yes, I was Brooke Shields for a day. Yeah. But that was, I treasure that. What did Cartoon uh, Boy have to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> the Great Wall of China. To, to be able to say you broadcast a, a, a show from the Great Wall of China or live from the Roman Coliseum, yep. that kind of yep. thing. It, you know, and I do remember those. Oh, vividly. sure. Yeah. I but, it, you know, I, I think we have to be careful here to point out that while you did those things, you'll continue to do that kind of thing. Do you think so? Oh, absolutely. Really? I think that this is the beginning, and change is, is ever so important. And, and again, I can only congratulate you for, for having the courage to, to live through it and come out smelling like a rose and, and to, to, you know, control your own fate in this business. Thank you so much. Nice to see you, Jane. Good luck to you. James Hawley, let us, oh, we have flowers. Please, please, where are the flowers from Miss Pauly? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll be right back, folks. Thank you. right Thursday as an earlier today bonehead it's too late to watch these shows now they're over they're gone I guess you figured there was something more important than watching NBC tonight well don't come whining to me I know a lot of families who keep the TV on 10 hours a day what the hell is wrong with you you make me sick I'm so mad I'm gonna get in my Lincoln Town car and lean on the gas till I get to West Virginia <laughs> West Virginia! Gonna get in my Lincoln Town car and lean on the gas! West Virginia! Kind of a Durante thing. Walter Mondale was the first person she interviewed on the uh, Today ah. Show 13 years ago. 13 Tom Brokaw and she were co hosting the affair, and uh, Walter Mondale was her first guest. That's interesting. There you go. Jane Pauley, 13 years. Broadcasting history ending tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I'm all for. I think she's money in the bank. Absolutely. Yeah. Pay dirt. Solid gold. Yeah. Uh, coming up in this half hour of the program, Phoebe Cates will be joining us. A lovely, talented actress. Phoebe. Well, yeah, now I'm not sure she'll come out. 
call that caterwauling. Um, also, uh, Bob Sarlot. Uh, tomorrow on the program, get something to jot this down with. Here we go. Guest number one, Paul Reiser. Guest number two, world's oldest acrobats, Ronaldo and Karina. Guest number three, Jimmy Cliff. This is one of those 90-minute jobs. Is that right, Morty? Guest number four, Bjorn Nitmo. Bjorn Nitmo. <laughs> Phonetically, of course, that's Bjorn. There you have your Bjorn. There's your Bjorn. Nit. There you have your there Nit. Have your Mo. Mo. And you have your Bjorn Nitmo. He'll yeah. be on tomorrow. <laughs> Kicks with his pants off. Uh, coming up after this commercial, Phoebe Cates will be joining us, boys and girls. Come on back. So I'm told now that 13 years ago when Jane uh, came to New York City to audition for this job, Paul, yeah. conducting one of the people on the crew conducting her auditions was one of our stage managers, Jeff Samaha. He nice auditioned job. her? Yeah. yeah. She remember that? Yeah. yeah. She didn't remember it? No. Yeah. Or, or how do we know you're not lying about this? Oh, thing? no, I do remember yeah. it. Yeah. You do right. remember. Was she good then? She was excellent. Yeah. And actually... did you say to yourself, there she is. She's I... got the job. Right. Solid gold, pay dirt, money in the bank. Here I we did. go. No. And I picked her. So uh, are you sorry that she's leaving? Very much I so. think you can't be an American and not be sorry. Absolutely. Plus, I don't believe that there's a man, woman, or child alive today who doesn't enjoy a lovely beverage. <laughs> That's definitely true. Did I just get here? <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, boy, we'll be lucky to have this job for 13 years. We won't, of course. Weasels. Weasels will see to that. I don't. Uh, our next guest is a charming actress whose films include Gremlins and uh, Bright Lights, Big City. She is currently performing uh, in The Tenth Man at the uh, Vivian Beaumont. Oh, have you seen what they've done to the Vivian Beaumont? It's I lovely. Down there oh, right you got to get up there. Uh, <laughs> at Lincoln Center, right here in New York, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Phoebe Cates. Here she is. Christmas. Happy New Year to you. Same and, to you. And how are you feeling? I understand you, you had or have a cold? I have a, yeah, it's towards the end of a bad cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How long did it last? Because they're going around. Everybody I know has one. Yeah, uh, well, it's only lasted three days so far, but because I, I've been taking lots of tetracycline and... Uh, Chased it right away. Yeah. Hopefully. And also, you, you injured your, your knee? Yes. Since I was last year, I, I broke my, my uh, kneecap. Do, doing what exactly? Oh, um, I slipped on a wet floor mm -hmm. and dislocated my knee. I've got a brace on now. Mm -hmm. uh, just just a, any wet floor? There's no lawsuits <laughs> involved or anything? No, it was a, a, a rented house, but uh, it was my own fault. Mm -hmm. And, and is, is this a problem doing the play? You do it nightly? Uh, it's not a problem because the brace helps, and I've had this knee surgery. And, mm. Oh, you had knee surgery? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, what was that like? Um, harrowing. Yeah. W was it uh, arthroscopic knee surgery? Exactly. Is that what they talk about? Really? Yeah. And uh, that's where they put a little thing in your knee and they look all around and they, they prune and clip and so forth? Yeah, they have a camera actually inside your knee. A camera inside your knee, inside yeah. Inside your knee and they have utensils coming in other so they can see what they're uh. doing up on a video screen. Now, are, you're not out cold when they do this, are you? Um, yes, I was. You were out cold? You can choose to be. Uh -huh. Could they? <laughs> I'd like to be out cold now. <laughs> uh, is it, is it, uh, I forgot what I was going to say, but is it, uh, it must have been very uncomfortable, very, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's gotten much better. I've been doing this rehabilitation, and um, it's gotten stronger, so the, the show is, has imposed a problem. Yeah, yeah no, uh, do you, is it trouble doing a play with a lot of lines and stuff uh, uh, when you have a cold? Is that ever a problem? The only <laughs> problem so far with having a cold is that I, I play a catatonic schizophrenic in the show, so I sit very still for long periods of time and my nose starts to run like mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. So I just have to kind of let it drip down my face and onto the floor because... <laughs> oh. 
you're happy about that, I see. Well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somehow that's an image of you that never would have come to my mind. Um, did you have a nice Christmas? Did you get a, a lot of good presents? Yeah, I did. I got a beautiful red cashmere bathrobe mm -hmm. and lots of uh, all, all different sorts of things. Cashmere, though, now you're going to get that wet, right? Being a bathrobe and stuff. Is that all right to get cashmere wet? Well, I, I'll make sure not to. But what good's a bathrobe if you can't get it wet? <laughs> you don't only put on a bathroom when you get out of the bathtub. Yeah, but also what about this stuff dripping out of your nose? Isn't that <laughs> going to be a problem? This thing, I don't know. Um, and you, you, how long have you and uh, your husband, uh, Kevin, Kevin Klein, Kevin Klein, I always have to mention that. How long have you guys been married? This is like your second Christmas together? Uh, well, we've been together five years. This is, it'll be a year in March. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he's the one who gave you the bathrobe? Yes, yeah. he did. And, and what, what did you give him? Oh, I gave him, a, I gave him an outfit from Giorgio Armani. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh. Kind of a, a suit-like chic deal with a scarf and a cape? No, nothing oh. like that. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I, don't even know, I don't even know what outfit from Giorgio Armani means. Just a means. sports jacket and some, uh, some pants and a oh. nice sweater. And... Yeah, like an outfit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and do you guys give each other a lot of gifts, or is it just like one special gift, or how does that work? We give each other a few gifts. We don't have like a huge, mm -hmm. a huge Christmas. What's the worst gift this guy has given you? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> last Christmas, um, he wanted to, um, I did Romeo and Juliet last year at the Goodman Theater in Chicago, and he wanted to um, get me a gift that would sort of commemorate my playing Juliet. So I thought it would be a glass figurine or something. It ended up being this enormous thing that when I took the sheet down and my friends who were in the room screamed, it was so... Well, imposing, mm -hmm. say. and it was a, a hat rack that was supposed to look like me, and it it had a face that was sort of shaped like that, right? And then it had this this hair, this really kinky hair, uh -huh. and um, it was horrifying actually. And then it had like sticks coming out of the the body that were supposed to be put hats on. And he had commissioned this work he for you. He commissioned it, and it was actually the work on it was really beautiful, but mm -hmm. it was it didn't look like me at all, and it was scary. Yeah, well, it sounds like it might frighten small children, especially. <laughs> so we exchanged it and got some other things by the same artist, mm -hmm. and got some beautiful dolls. And then, and then did that create friction in the relationship, or were you able to say to him, "Oh, this this you know it stinks. I don't want it." I said, <laughs> I said, "Get it away." <laughs> that and, and that wasn't a problem. No. Yeah. Yeah, is it just me, or are you the cutest human being alive? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see, where else? Where were we? What the... Oh, what'd you do before you got into acting and uh, modeling and that kind of stuff? What did you have jobs before you got into... Uh... I had so many different kinds of jobs. I was a... I was a plain clothes security um, person. Really? When I was 11 is, in a drugstore. When gallery, you were 11? The gallery drugstore. Were you carrying a gun? Um, no, I just had to sort of pretend I was shopping and spy on people and then uh -huh. <laughs> get to report them when I saw them stealing things. Right, but you're just a kid. You could be in grave danger. Not really, because I, 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 they would sort of take care of it. I didn't actually say, like, put that down. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to go to the cashier. You didn't have to bust something. up holdups or anything. No, nothing yeah. like that. And, and how long did you have that job? I did that two summers in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, where was this? That was at the Gallery Drugstore on East 60th Street. What was your what was your first sort of professional deal where you were acting and and getting money for it? What was that? Um, I guess it was. No, it wasn't that. Uh, it was a, a, I got cast in a series that ABC. They did this big you know search and I got cast. So it was a, a real big deal for you. Yeah. 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 You know now that Jane's gone, I could probably get you on the Today Show. <laughs> uh, Paul, a little music please for our friend Phoebe. Where are the Thank you very much for being here. Thanks. Happy New Year. What? We'll be right back with Bob Sarlacc. Uh, okay. You know, our next guest is a uh, regular visitor to uh, our little program here, and he will be performing next week. That's January 2nd through the 6th at the Punchline, located in San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a very funny man all the way from the Bay Area, Mr. Bob Sarlat. Bob! <laughs> How are you folks doing? We have a lot of visitors from New York or, or to New York for the first time here. 
I love this city. New York's the only city in America where at the end of every rainbow, you'll find an empty pot of gold with a chalk outline of a leprechaun. It's, uh... Thank you. Please, sit down. Thank you. You folks enjoying Christmas? Did you have a good Christmas? Huh? Great Christmas for me and my kids. They've got two girls, four and six. They're very much into Christmas, very much into Santa Claus, except they're a little bit of afraid of the guy. I think for good reason. I mean, even as adults, how would you like a guy that sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake? Uh, that's why a lot of people carry firearms, I think. Uh, thank you. You're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of a guy who knows firearms, how about that Manuel Noriega, huh? What a guy. Here he is holed up in the Vatican Embassy, and no one's claiming the guy. Hard to believe, I know. And uh, I'll tell you what, if nobody claims this guy, there's a real possibility he may spend some time in the Vatican with the Pope. Boy, I mean, that'll probably go over pretty well, won't it, huh? Hey, listen, uh, listen, Your Excellency, a nice place, beautiful pictures, but where the hell are the broads? Uh, well, you guys a little, uh, what's the deal here? Uh, it's been a great year for international diplomacy. This is the year the Berlin Wall came down, which is, I think, a very nice thing. Also, yeah, sure. I think the greatest thing about the liberation of Eastern Europe, we can finally all make that pilgrimage to the homeland of the Gabors, I think, which is kind of nice. <laughs> On your right, the birthplace of Magda, the forgotten Gabor sister. Uh, this is the year that Jim Baker finally got hammered. That's good news, I think. Uh, Originally, here was a guy that spent $267,000 to get some action. Boy, not a real good comparison chopper, huh, folks? Uh, yeah. What is it, 44 years in jail and losing a multi-million dollar empire? I think the only upside of prison for Jim is now his roommate's a little better looking. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that Tammy Faye, a very pretty lady, actually been documented. Takes Tammy Faye longer to put her makeup on than it did for Roddy McDowell in Planet of the Apes. So, uh, <laughs> good year for sports. I'm into sports a lot. Uh, we have any sports fans? You have to have a couple here, huh? <laughs> a great year because the Senior Baseball League began this year. Oh, boy, huh? All these old guys in the new league in Florida. I mean, this is not a great idea. These guys should know when to retire. Their legs are generally the first thing to go. It's kind of a sad thing seeing a guy playing center field in a lawn chair. You know, uh, <laughs> ground ball at the middle. Oh, it's off his walker into center field for a base hit. <laughs> I wonder who are the guys that are going to get to umpire? Probably old retired major league umpires. Can you imagine the arguments? Come on, up. That pitch was a foot outside. What are you, blind? Yes. <laughs> Oh, boy. It's been a good year of music. Van Morrison was just on this program a couple of weeks ago. Big comeback for Van. Do you like Van Morrison? He's a good singer. <laughs> Except I've never been able to understand a word the guy says in his songs. Have you? Remember the song, like, Come Running? What it grabs and it grabs and it breathes, blah, blah. Yeah, thank you, man. That's perfect. Uh, <laughs> has it ever happened to you, though? You're driving around the car with people, and sometimes you got the radio going, and maybe you don't know this guy too well. You turn it on, you start singing along. You think you're doing a pretty good job on the song. Yay! And all of a sudden, like, you're singing the wrong words to a song. And the person you're with busts you for it, you know? First time this ever happened to me was in a song by the Rascals called Groovin'. Remember Groovin'? Groovin' on a Sunday afternoon. And they go, that would be ecstasy, you and me. I thought they were saying, you and me and Leslie Groovin'. <laughs> and, that's, and Leslie Groovin', Bob, yeah. I don't think the Rascals had a menage a trois in mind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Well, you hear an old song by Credence and you're totally off the mark. No, there's a bathroom on the right. <laughs> there's a bad moon on the rise. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> this is also the year they finally canceled Miami Vice. Ooh, how many care about that? <laughs> now, that show was kind of cool for a while. They had a lot of rock and roll stars on there as actors. But the wimpiest thing they used to do is, toward the end of the run, they were actually running out of hip names for contraband drugs. You remember this? I remember an episode of Crockett walks in and says, yeah, I got a line on 100 kilos of nose whiskey. <laughs> Who's ever called it nose whiskey? What happens next week? Tubbs finds a big shipment of nasal pasta. <laughs> All right, Freeze, who's got the sinus sushi here? <laughs> or those nostril Twinkies? Freeze! Thank you very much. Been real much fun. <laughs> Have a seat here, Bob. Good to see you guys. All right. Paul 
Paul, could we have a little flower music, please? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yes, that's right, oh, Bob. No. Flower music.